Now I know I just did a video on my home server setup and the software that's running on it, but since then I've actually made a major change to what's running on that server. Gone is the Windows 10 base operating system and what's replaced it is actually Proxmox. Now, what is Proxmox and why did I change to it? Let's find out. So what is Proxmox? Proxmox is a Linux-based operating system that acts as a dedicated hypervisor. So while Windows 10 is, you know, your generic, you know, all around, good to have operating system, Proxmox is built specifically for those users in a home server setup or even an enterprise server setup. So why did I switch from Windows 10 to Proxmox? Well, there's no real good answer. Um, I wasn't really doing much gaming on that server anymore and I've seen a lot of comments of people pointing me directly to hypervisor operating systems over Windows and upon doing some research I came across a few channels like Techno Tim and Craft Computing who are both running Proxmox and make it look like a lot more fun than just running something like Windows. So I went for it. Now I'm going to cut to the chase and say that I am extremely happy with this change. Proxmox has been a lot of fun to work with. Uh, gives you a lot more flexibility in what you can do. It makes the whole home server experience a lot more enjoyable. So what I'm gonna do is go through my pros and cons of my switch from Windows to Proxmox and let you guys make a decision if that's something that you may wanna do. Okay, the pros. Uh, number one, there is much less overhead when using a dedicated hypervisor like Proxmox. Proxmox is designed specifically to run VMs and storage solutions, whereas Windows 10 is your generic operating system that's built for basically everybody. So in Windows 10, there's gonna be a lot of services and programs that are gonna be running in the background that have nothing to do with your hypervisor setup that you may be running on your home server. So that's gonna eat up a lot of your resources that you know you, you really would like to have back and dedicated to your VMs or storage solutions. So Proxmox eliminates a lot of that because it has one job, function as a hypervisor. So it eliminates a lot of those unnecessary services and uses your hardware much more efficiently. Pro number two, Proxmox can actually function as a NAS on your home network. Uh, it has built-in ZFS support, which is an extremely popular protocol. ZFS has a good combination of speed, redundancy, and efficiency. So anytime where you can use ZFS as your main storage solution, I definitely recommend going with it. Another pro is that Proxmox offers extremely easy backup solutions. Now, before when I was running Windows 10, I was using VirtualBox. And while VirtualBox does have backups, it can be extremely cumbersome to figure out um, their snapshot kind of format and how to roll back and get the right thing that you wanted in case of a you know failure. Proxmox, on the other hand, you can set timed backups, whether you want that you know multiple times a day, once a week, once a month. Um, it'll back up your entire VM to a dedicated drive that you specify and it's extremely easy to recover that. I've done it before uh, with a couple of VMs that I was testing on and happened to blow up. So I simply went to the drive where all my backups were stored, clicked restore, and within 30 seconds, I had my old VM up and running. Extremely easy to use. Um, I've had zero problems with their backup feature. Another pro and probably the main one that I heard from users when I was running a home server on Windows 10 was uh, the PCI pass-through function. So Proxmox will actually allow you to pass through an entire PCI device directly to a VM. So this was not available in Windows 10 running VirtualBox. So any VM I had running I couldn't pass through any of the physical PCI devices that I had plugged into that machine. Whereas on Proxmox, I can take an entire graphics card and pass that through 
to a Windows VM. And I'm actually doing that because uh, the home server is still sitting in the living room area next to a big screen TV. So I'd still like to use it for gaming. So I do have a Windows 10 VM with a GT 1030 pass through so that I can, you know, at least run some easy to run games. Now this is a double-edged sword because if you were using your home server for gaming like I was when I had, you know, my VR set up, it's much easier to run games on a dedicated Windows 10 machine rather than go through the entire process of passing through PCI devices. Because while Proxmox does offer that feature and I have gotten it working pretty well, um, it can be kind of a pain and you may have to find a few guides and make some tweaks before you can get it working perfectly in your scenario. Another pro is that Proxmox is built directly on top of Linux. So if you're familiar with Linux, then you'll be right at home using Proxmox. And you can interact with your server directly from the terminal if that's what you're most familiar with. Now again, this is a double-edged sword and I'll get to that when I go over my cons, but um, as you'll see, and as I've said before, I'm extremely happy with Proxmox, so the pros are definitely gonna outweigh the cons. Now here, let me mention some of the things I listed as neutral. I have no strong feelings one way or the other. Meaning that there was no real change between using my Windows 10 machine uh, with VirtualBox versus changing to Proxmox. In both scenarios, you can set up as many virtual machines as your hardware will allow. This kind of ties into the next neutral and that it's pretty easy on both systems to allocate resources as you see fit for your virtual machines. So if you want one virtual machine to have two cores and four gigs of RAM with a 50 gigabyte hard drive, you can do that. If you want one machine to have 32 cores and 128 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte hard drive, you can do it. Uh, both systems are extremely easy to allocate your resources and make sure your VMs have the setups that you see fit. And the last neutral is kind of more of a pro for Proxmox. Uh, I put down that they're both free because while technically Windows 10 isn't free, um, a lot of people will use that as their base operating system. And then VirtualBox itself is free. Um, but Proxmox, you can get 99% of the functionality for free. There are paid tiers for enterprise users, but the main thing that that's getting you outside of the free tier is that it allows dedicated enterprise updates from Proxmox's dedicated repository that you don't get on the free tier, but that's not really a functionality that I would knock um, from being on a free tier. So they're both free-ish. Okay, let's move to the cons. And I kind of alluded to the first one before uh, with the pass-throughs where if you're gonna be using your home server for gaming, and that's gonna be one of your main priorities, I would stick with Windows 10 because it's kind of a pain to get GPU pass-through set up depending on what your setup is. Now, it's a lot easier with an Intel-based processor due to most of them having um, integrated graphics. Now, I was running a Ryzen processor which doesn't have dedicated graphics, and while it's possible, to pass through a GPU on a Ryzen system, it, I could not get it to work um, without adding another GPU for the host to see as its primary output. So what I did was I just threw an old GT710 in there so that the host would recognize that and use it, allowing me to pass through the second graphics card, which was my GT1030 to my gaming virtual machine. And the second and kind of last con that I've seen builds upon the previous pro of it being built on top of Linux. Now, most of you know that Linux is open source and you can do basically whatever you see fit within your operating system. Now that's awesome because it gives you tons of flexibility and allows you to customize features in any way you see fit. 
but it's also easy to get yourself in trouble. So with all that power comes lots of responsibility. Now, I was actually messing around with Proxmox on one of my old machines uh, before making the big change on my actual home server. And I definitely started going into the weeds a little too far and outside of my comfort zone and actually bricked the system. So I did have to do a clean install of Proxmox. So that was kind of a lesson learned, uh, not to venture too far out of my comfort zone and be a little bit more careful, but I've since learned my lesson and approach everything much more carefully now. So that's kind of all I had in terms of pros and cons with my setup. Like I said, I'm extremely happy with Proxmox and I've seen a lot of people doing really cool things with it. Um, I know I've barely scratched the surface of what's possible on it, but I am learning. And while Proxmox is definitely here to stay, uh, my home server actually is not. I do have an upgrade coming and let's just say it's pretty epic. So be on the lookout for that video because after I'm done filming this, I'm actually gonna be migrating everything from my current home server to my new setup. And you won't wanna miss that. This server is pretty awesome. So if you saw something in this video that you'd like me to go a little bit more in detail about, definitely drop a comment below. If there's any of you out there that are currently using Proxmox and there's some cool feature that you, know, you swear by, drop a comment below. I'd love to hear how you guys are using Proxmox. I'm open to ideas. I have an overkill server that I need to utilize uh, to justify spending way too much money on it. But if you like this video, be sure to drop a like below. If you loved it, subscribe so you're notified the next time we post something awesome. See y'all in the next one.